All right. All right, so everybody have a survey right now? We'll discuss the, the answers later, but I just want you to have it and kind of follow along as I go through the brief. All right, good morning, everybody. All right, we're going to talk about the effects of online gaming addiction. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Greg Mabry. I'm an Army social worker slash psychologist out of Fort Campbell. And i um, just going to talk about some of the trends that I see in uh, soldiers today and go over some of the case studies that I'm presenting to you as far as online gaming addiction. And I'm going to give you the extremes on both sides. All right, so because I am a government entity, I have to give the disclaimer. Everything I tell you today, the US military doesn't endorse it. Um, I'm here on my own accord. Got to do that. All right, so let's give an overview of online gaming addiction. What is online gaming addiction? Clinically, it's anything that shows academic, social, or occupational impairment. So if you game for 12 hours straight and you're able to go to your job and function and have a girlfriend and everything's hunky-dory, then it's not a problem to me, it's not a problem to you, it's not a problem to her. But when you start showing uh, signs that, you know what, this is impacting my life in a negative way, then yeah, you have an addiction. All right, I'm not bashing gaming, love gaming. I'm an avid Left 4 Dead 2 player, love Counter-Strike. Uh, I don't touch MMOs because I know how I would be if I got to MMOs. Um, but, you know, why is this guy talking to me? Well, um, to give you a little bit of background, I'm an Army social worker, so I work with people who have uh, anxiety issues, depression. And when people come to me, they don't say, hey, Dr. Mabry, I have a gaming addiction. No, it's something else. I'm depressed. I got in trouble at work. Um, I'm anxious about taking this test. Why is that? Well, we're going to go into some of the case studies to show you why some of these people have these problems. All right, public perception of online gaming addict. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, South Park kind of got it right. You have the rock star energy drinks. You have the dirty laundry in the corner. You have the guy who has that, that, uh, that brace because he has been clicking and in that position for so long, he can't move his hand. Custom computer case, and so forth and so on. So this is the public perception of who we are. Hopefully it's not too close to reality for some of us. Just saying. All right, so it's time for this guy to leave the house. Sunlight burns his eyes, right? <laughs> Kicking and screaming. So this is some of us uh, who, let's say, play World of Warcraft. And, okay, it's time to go to work, but uh, just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. All of a sudden, you're late for work, and your boss is saying, what happened? And you got to think of some elaborate excuse to try to say, I wasn't gaming. But these are the addicts I work with. This is somebody who works at McDonald's or, or um, has a job to where, okay, I'm late, no biggie, no harm, no foul. These people, if they're late to their job, if they miss movement, if they oversleep, dire consequences, and not just for them, you know, for the people that they're protecting. Uh, in the military, we have strict rules. Uh, being late, that's just not even an option. Uh, have anybody who's affiliated with the military or former military in here? Okay. So, who's heard this before? To be early is to be on time. Who wants to finish it? <laughs> Who wants to finish that saying? To be on time is to be late. And to be late is to be... There, there's, there's another acronym we use called FUBAR. Oh, yeah. we, we won't say what F stands for, but f up beyond any recognition. So there, there is no late. You're either early. Well, actually, there's late. You're either early or you're late. There's no on time. All right. So, who says I'm an addict? Now, in the mental health field, we have we call it the Bible, and this Bible is called the DSM-4, the Diagnostic Statistics Manual of Mental Disorders. If you look through the DSM-4, you will not see internet addiction. You will not see online gaming addiction, and I'm going to tell you why. The DSM-5, that comes out 
2013-ish. No one knows when it's going to be released. They're talking May, and this is kind of an update to the Bible. And then the IAT, that's what you have in your hand right now, the Internet Addiction Test. And we'll go into those things in more detail. And if you have questions or something strikes a chord, please let me know. We can um, go right into it. You don't have to wait to the very end. All right, so the dsm 4 This manual, the Bible, that uh, all the psychiatric people use was, it came out in 1994. So everything that's ever going to be wrong with you mentally, it didn't exist after 1994. Um, the DSM-3, which came out prior to this, believe it or not, homosexuality was considered a mental disorder. So uh, the, the DSM is affected by cultural trends. And if you think about 1994, we weren't doing a lot of online gaming back in 1994. When you start talking about 1995, 96, you get into Warcraft 2, Starcraft. We had a stable, well, not stable, I say quote unquote stable, um, dial-up connection. So that's when you start seeing online gaming addiction kind of take hold. And you may have been on the computer and you would get an angry message from your mom saying, hey, your granny's been trying to call you <laughs> for the past six hours, but you're tying up the phone line. That's when people outside the gaming community start saying, hey, maybe well, my son or daughter, or maybe I'm addicted because I'm just dead to the world because they can't get a hold of me by one way, one way or another. Okay, so a smart guy named uh, Dr. Goldberg, he said, you know what, I'm starting to see some of these things, but there's nothing in our Bible that could diagnose them or to diagnose them with. So he looked at everything in the DSM and took the diagnostic criteria, and the closest thing he came to was pathological gambling. So to a clinician, a pathological gambler and an internet addict or an online gaming addict, the criteria is essentially the same. Replace gambling with gaming, replace gambling with internet, and that's the criteria that they kind of apply it to. So in order to be considered a pathological gambler or a, an online gaming addict or an internet addict, you have to meet five out of ten criteria. And you're going to see these criteria right about now. One, two, three. Now, you can say, well, this applies to me or a friend. <laughs> so feel free, feel free to, to comment on your friend. All right, one, preoccupation. The subject has frequent thoughts about gambling experiences, whether past, future, or fantasy. Maybe. Tolerance. So. How you interpret tolerance in an online gaming? You could used to, used to say, okay, I'm going to game for 20 minutes. I'm good. 20 minutes turned into an hour. Hour turned into two hours. So that's how they apply that criteria in the in the tolerance sense. <laughs> Striking a chord here. Uh oh. <laughs> Withdraw. So if you uh, talk to a WoW addict, I'm not saying there are any in here, but the longer they're away from their guild, or longer they're away from the game, man, I'm, I'm missing up on uh, some loot, missing up on some power leveling. What's going on here? There you go. So again, again remember, you just need five out of 10. Some of you are already up to three. Just <laughs> not point fingers. A hobby. The difference between a hobby and an addiction, you can quit a hobby anytime you want. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Four through seven. Escape. So whenever I want to de-stress, I go home, I play my game, and everything's okay. Chasing. Okay. How would you apply chasing in an online gaming setting? So let's say uh, you die and you lose XP. Oh, man. 
I got to get my levels back. I got to get to the top of that leader's board. I got to increase my rank. Lying. Okay, so we're among friends here. So if um, we can talk about gaming, computer stuff, and IT, because we're among friends, but when your coworkers at work talk about, yeah, that football game was great this weekend, what did you do? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I watched that football game too. Yeah, go team. Meanwhile, you're, um, you got that carpal tunnel from that, those mouse clicks. <laughs> and then uh, loss of control. Uh, people who have success, well, who attempted to um, stop, or their their loved one, their girlfriend say, "Hey, you're you're gaming too much. You gotta choose the the game or me." And I choose you, sweetie. While you're gonna click, give me a hug. Click, click, click. <laughs> Lost control, guys. Again, five out of ten. This is through seven right now. Eight illegal acts person has broken the law in order to obtain gambling money. Well, gaming. How would somebody break the law in order to continue their online gaming habit? Neighbors Wi-Fi. Wi Piracy. Piracy. Okay. Playing on the clock at your job. That's a good one. That's a good one. I went, and those are all Good, valid examples. Not saying I've done any of them, but uh, valid examples. But I'm going to the extremes here. All right, so 2010, Romania. Um, this kid came home one day and he tried to log on and play Counter Strike. Internet wouldn't work. Mom, what's, what's going on? Sweetie. I think you have an online gaming problem. I turned off the internet. Okay, mom. He stabs her 17 times, takes her money, and goes to the local internet cafe where the police found him at the internet cafe gaming. Playing Counter-Strike. So, illegal acts. But hey, you can quit anytime he wants, though, right? That was just eight. Nine through ten. You gotta choose the game or me. I think you're playing too much. Okay, sweetie, you're out the door. And then bail out. Hey, uh, I don't really have any money to pay my rent, but I need to pay my uh, subscription fee for EverQuest and. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind living on the street. I can, you know, jack my neighbor's Wi-Fi, but I need my, uh, my WoW, my EverQuest. Or Eve, whatever your, your poison is. All right, so the, the DSM-5. I alluded to this earlier. It, it's coming out. Uh, the clinicians have kind of seen this is a problem, and it's kind of a generational thing, because if you think about it, Back in 1994, you know, all these psychologists, these social workers, these psychiatrists, think about when they went to school. So we're talking 80s, early, early 90s. There was no such thing. And some people, if you, t if you say the word computers, they get this hazy, glassed over look. And you try to tell a 60-year-old clinician, hey, computer addiction, I have no idea what you're talking about, moving on. So in 2013, you've had, you had a, you've had a few generations of gamers, a few generations of people who are just now tech savvy. Says, okay, you know what? It is a problem. Let's explore this further. So hopefully, in the new edition of the the DSM, this will be a diagnosable uh, condition. Now, America is a little bit different. In the rest of the world, it's recognized all over the place. Uh, China, Korea, uh, Japan. They have re-education camps in China uh, for people who are addicted to the internet. Uh, the, the Finnish military. You can be discharged from the Finnish military with a condition of internet or online gaming addiction. 
It's that serious and that prevalent around the world. Uh, America, we just recently have started um, re-education treatment facilities. Uh, one of them is called Restart. Uh, Restart is a, uh, is a facility ran by uh, Dr. Kimberly Young, uh, who, <laughs> Dr. Kimberly Young, who says, you know what, your son or daughter, they're playing too many games, let's get them back on the right track. Okay, so the IAT, what you have in your hand. It's a ballot and reliable tool. This is what clinicians are using right now to kind of quantify um, an addiction. And when it's used, why is it used? You don't just walk up to somebody and say, hey, you look like a hacker or a gamer. Fill this out. Doesn't work that way. So when someone comes to me and they say, hey, you know, I'm depressed. I have this issue, oh, I'm, I have anxiety. Oh, okay, well, what do you do to relax? You know, I watch TV, I go to movies, I play computer games. Computer games? Tell me more. Oh, you know, I play Call of Duty. Okay, so you can just hit pause and go to something else, right? Pause? No, I play with my friends. So if there's a history of their, their um, the way to relax is geared towards online gaming. I'll kind of slip them this. Now, in my mind, I've already said, yeah, I, I can see where he's going with this. But it's not me that I'm trying to treat. It's them. And it's better for the patient to kind of have a self-awareness, to have an insight. So you know how if you have a, I won't say a nagging wife, that's, that's sexist. Let's say you have a, a nagging significant other. He says, hey, honey, you need to do this. Got it. But your best friend can say the exact same thing, and it's a totally new concept. Well, it's the same thing. If I say, hey, you need to cut down your gaming, whatever, this guy's know what he's talking about. But then I hand him a sheet of paper, he fills it out and says, wait a minute. An independent source is saying, I have a problem. Interesting. So the IAT is a very powerful tool, and it, it's used to really spark that self-awareness and that insight. All right, so case studies. How are these people that I've worked with compared to my friends? Number one. All right, so in all these examples, they're all military. So 31-year-old Caucasian male is being seen for anxiety for missing, the, uh, for, uh, uh, for missing formation. Why would he be missing morning formation? <laughs> tired. tired. <laughs> Why would he be tired? Staying up all night. OK. So in the military, if you miss formation, we already went over the whole late, early thing. But there are a lot of sanctions that can happen. They can take away your pay. They can take away your rank. You can be confined to post. If you live off post, they can forcibly move you back on post because you miss formation. So it uh, depends. I, I've. Yes, it, it depends on the chain of command. It can be once, it can be twice. And most people aren't going to hammer you the first time, but they're going to try to work with you. But these people have, have a pattern. Have a pattern. So his, he, he had depression before, and when people have depression, they find a way to cope, whether it's you know, eating, uh, drinking, well, this method was playing online games. Nothing wrong with it in moderation, but it became his main crutch. And PS3, when people think of online games, yes, the PS3 has online capabilities, but people don't think of it as an online game. It's just, oh, my game. Well, he deployed, and I, I kind of explored, uh, why did you choose you know, Call of Duty? Well, when he deployed to Afghanistan, and those of us, uh, my prior service folks in here, did you guys deploy, go overseas? OK. Uh, when did you deploy, if I'm not asking? OK, 07, 08. So you kind of had a better infrastructure, probably where you're at. Um, the internet can be slow sometimes. And your only way of communicating, I mean, you have cell phones. They work sometimes. But emailing back and forth is kind of a primary way 
that we try to communicate daily stuff. Well, he would go to the local internet cafe, and he would shoot an email, wait for a response, and while he would wait for his response, he would um, play Counter-Strike. Um, that worked for a while, but when you're in a combat deployed environment, misinformation, or it's not really information, but when you miss your duty because you're oversleeping, you're putting other people's lives at risk. Use the, there's a method that Dr. Kimberly Young, the creator of your IAT, uh, created for treatment, and it's called CBTIA, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Internet Addiction. So it's strictly treatment that is geared towards internet addiction. And his measures in the IAT were, he, he had a significant elevation in 5, 8, and 14. And if you look on your, your paper, what is 5, 8, and 14, and how does that compare to your friend? I'm not saying it's going to happen to you. It's showing you extreme circumstances, why they come see me, how they present, and you have in your hand. Any questions so far? On yes. So I get that you're talking about gaming. But yes. This could also equally apply to say Reddit, right? Or uh, like or those kind of uh, news aggregation social uh, networks. Like anything within any online community, I'm guessing applies to is not just strictly gaming. The reason why I focus on games. Online community, it gives you a social outlet. So your, your social needs are being met. In gaming, your, your entertainment meet, your needs, your, your need to relax is being met. When you talk about online gaming, now it's a combination of the both. It's social and it's a stress relief with gaming. That's what makes it so enticing. So if I just said, hey, this person's on Facebook 24-7, okay, cool. So what? He, he's talking to his friends, but then he may do another activity to relax. The combination of the two is a powerful drug. Make sense? Yeah, but I would go back and say that things like Reddit and, and these other kind of networks have gamification, not straight up games, but they have gamification mechanics that uh, can get at some of uh, what you're talking about with the, the, the character and the game design. They, they are kind of games in their own right. They, right. They have But yes, to answer your question, that, that could apply. These, these are just the case studies that I've had. I don't, I don't run into a, a normal, uh, heavy tech savvy user in the military. They exist, obviously, but in my office, they don't, they don't exist in my office. But yes, that that could apply. <laughs> yes, go ahead. And I have thought of that, and that's more of a generational thing. Because prior to that, parents sat their kids in front of the TV. Yeah. You know, TV addiction, does it exist? Oh, okay, I, I guess. But, but the prevalence, the, the effect it's going to have. And we're going to go into the social aspect or the social um, atrophy uh, that people experience when they spend a lot of time communicating online gaming way. I mean, you have a microphone, you can talk to people while you're, you know, getting a headshot 
or talking to your people while you're on a raid. So I'm definitely going to the social aspect of that. Yes, these, these people that come to my office, they are here. The presenting problem may not be, I gained too much. It's, hey, I missed formation, I'm depressed. I had this problem, I'm depressed. And you look at the root cause of their depression, or the root cause of that issue, and it stems from a deficiency or their addiction to gaming. If I'm stressed and then I uh, drink and get a DUI, what was the cause? Was the cause the alcohol or was the cause the stress? Because other people deal with stress different ways. If I'm stressed, I can go work out. So am I blaming my stress or am I blaming the alcohol? Right. It's it's finding a healthy outlet for your stress. I'm sorry. In the foreign countries, I know in China. Um, and most of the re-education camps, first of all, in China, they're ran by the military. So you're putting civilian populace in a camp or a re-education facility ran by the Chinese military. Um, kids have been, I mean, broken bones, fractured wrists. Uh, I know in, in Korea, they try to, to beat the addiction out of you. So it's, it's one of those things where you have to look at the, the context. In the U.S., I know they try to take these people and do like the wilderness thing. Okay, instead of gaming, let's let's get you out in the nature. Let's get you into hiking. Let's let's get you some type of physical activity. I know the sun burns your eyes. I know, but let's, let's, let's get you outside. And if if, if some if, if people who have actually been away from gaming for a very long time, uh, let's say you've been on a business trip or some type of training. You know, when you get back home, you it's like, yeah, I, I kind of want a game, but I've been away for so long that urge is kind of dissipated. And then they get back into it eventually. But still, it's not as strong and as powerful if you just, if you're forced to go cold turkey for one circumstance or another. All of us have an addiction at some point in time. It's just how much of a uh, hindrance is it to our social, occupational, or academics. Um, but yes, go ahead. You have to, has to go with, has to do with motivation. So work, you know, I want to do a good job. I'm trying to provide for my family. I'm trying to get a promotion. Where online gaming, it's an artificial achievement. You're, you're still trying to achieve something with your work, but that artificial achievement, I can dump 50 hours into my character. Great, I had a really cool character, but what have you really accomplished or the lack of accomplishment in other things? If that's the way you know you, you meet you know significant other, then you know <laughs> it's kind of hazy there. But you have to weigh the pros and cons of everything. You know, if if I game for a thousand hours and, and, and wow, and you know, what, what's the trade-offs? That's kind of strong. Um, everybody is functional to a point. 
when you start talking about the, the negative effects. So if, again, I'm going to use the military for an example. If this person ends up getting court-martial or ends up losing rank and losing pay, so let's say this person loses pay for approximately, I don't know, say six months. Say he's docked three, four hundred dollars a month for six months. So we're talking, what, two thousand plus dollars? All because he had to get one more headshot? Or, you know, he had to go on one more raid? So risk versus reward, what's the, what's the trade-off? That's number one. Number two, I'm going to pick on uh, not just the guys, uh, I'm going to pick on some of the, the women as well. Okay, so a 23-year-old Hispanic female comes to my office uh, being seen for anxiety. She is distraught. Uh, now, in the military, military pay for as much school as you want. They will pay, the military paid for four degrees for me. So as long as you keep going, and as long as uh, you make good grades, they'll pay for whatever you want. You fail a class, you got to pay that back. Now, she was distraught. Um, she, she was relatively low rank, so she didn't make a lot of money anyway. So a class that she fails is about $700. And $700 to a lower enlisted soldier, that's devastating. And it's not, they don't have the option, it gets taken out of their pay. In addition to that, she's failed that class, so you still have to pay, you still have to pay that money again to retake the class. So now you're out $1,400. Farmville. <laughs> People don't think of Farmville as an online game, but it has all the makings of an online game. You have a social aspect being met by trading stuff with uh, your, your friends. Yes. I don't know about more prevalent because now we're talking worldwide. Um, the, the WoW community, or any type of MMO, I mean, they have a strong, strong player base. I mean, um, but Yes, Facebook and Farmville. What makes Farmville so in enticing is you can do it on your cell phone, I believe. You can, you, know, you can do it at work. You can do it at home. So you can do it anywhere. So yeah, I'm, I'm functioning. I'm at work. I'm here on time. But what was the trade-off? Once again, the trade-off, I keep talking about it's the trade-off. Yes, I'm spending my time playing Farmville. But I didn't study for my class. I didn't take that quiz. And now, guess what? I, I failed. And her, her farm build, sorry? Yeah, yeah you, have, you have the best crops. <laughs> yeah, you have crops that cost you uh, $1,400. So now, so now uh, that's, that's the trade-off. Um, I use, now, CBTIA, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on this. Uh, I told you that it was developed by uh, Dr. Young, and he uses a risk reduction model. Risk reduction is seen as the, the best way to kind of treat an online gaming addict or internet addict. And when I say risk reduction, if I spend, it's a conservative number, say I spend four hours a day gaming. And if I spend four hours a day gaming, I'm neglecting, say, chores, laundry, cutting the grass, this, that, and the other. So a risk reduction model says, okay, instead of gaming for four hours this week, game for three hours and 30 minutes, and those 30 minutes, cut the grass, or do laundry. Okay, the next week, instead of three and a half, game for um, three, and do this, that, and the other. And eventually, you're not trying to wean them off. You're trying to reach a healthy balance to where you're still getting your needs met, and you're still functional, and you're still being productive. And this person, again, she, you don't consider her a heavy internet addict, but this person actually scored um, an elevated six on the uh, internet addiction test. So if you look at number six, I believe that's the academic impairment portion. Any questions on number two? All right. 
and dry. And just just to give a, a caveat to to Farmville, anybody remember the old BBS days? Yes, the love the BBS days. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not an old person, um, but my uh, grandfather had a Commodore 64. Yes, and I loved it. That was my first experience with uh, gaming. And I had that uh, that plug-in module modem. I think it's like 1,200 baud or 800 baud. And I would connect to the BBS and I would play um, Red Dragon in Trade Wars, Immortal, all those games. And where where they had it right is you had a certain a certain number of moves. You can only do so much, and then you had to come back tomorrow. That kind of kept internet addiction and online gaming addiction from being pronounced or actually being discovered back in the late 80s, early 90s, because it actually set limits. Yes, because we can play, but we need to make room for other people to dial in to connect, so instead of people hanging out and playing Red Dragon in all day long. All right, here we go. I hear this more often than not. So the typical day for a soldier and I'm, I'm generalizing because different um, branches have different requirements. But typical day, they wake up, oh, dark 30, and they go home, oh, dark 30. So I just want to relax. He's at work from 0, 0530 in the morning to 630 at night. You want to relax too, but his way of relaxing was playing football on Xbox 360. I'll play football. It's pretty good. But his girlfriend says, you don't spend time with me anymore. All you do is come home and play. And then that sparks the argument, I work all day. All you do is do this and do that. And once again, good old risk reduction model. OK, instead of gaming from this time to this time, let's make a little bit of, let's, let's carve a little niche for your girlfriend. And we'll increase that niche once a week, and let's see if your uh, relationship issues kind of resolve themselves. And guess what? It did. They reached a healthy balance. And if you look at the, the IAT, those are the elevated scores. Has any of your friends heard this from their significant other? You play too much? You don't spend enough time with me? Time management, that, that could be an issue, but it's, it's not so much the time aspect. It's getting your, your, your wants and needs and desires met within a certain time. So I can watch, say I want to watch TV for, say I want to watch a TV show. That TV show lasts from this time to this time. There is a beginning and end to that TV show. If I'm playing online, there's, and especially with MMO, there's really no beginning and end. There's really no, there's no set time. If a raid lasts an hour and a half, it lasts an hour and a half. If it lasts 30 minutes, it lasts 30 minutes. It's not so much the time, it's the activity. The more into the activity. If I'm playing football, uh, I can kind of estimate when my game's going to end, but who knows? Timeouts, this, that, and the other. So it's more of an activity-based constraint than a time constraint. He works uh, 13 hours a day. That's and in, in the in the social work field, we work to change a person's environment. You can't change that. You have to learn to, to deal with it the best way you can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, why do, why do we work in jobs we don't like? It's always a stepping stone to something better. So you, you ha kind of have to endure you know, the, the stress and, and the hardship to hopefully move on to something better. 
the, the, the best and worst job I ever worked in my life was McDonald's. Because, um, because one, it said, hey, McDonald's, I got treated like crap. But then that said, hey, I'm motivated to uh, move on to bigger and better things. So I'm pretty sure no one wants to work 13 hours a day forever. I'm pretty sure they have uh, bigger and better things in the store. They just have to get there. All right. I got this case study one more, and then that'll be it. So Air Force. Uh, Fort Campbell is an Army post, so we have a very small contingent of Air Force for air traffic control, and they work on the airfield. And he was mean. He came to my office, uh, anxiety and depression, because he was caught with internet pornography on a government computer. That is a no-no. That is a huge no-no. Now, I don't know where you work, but if you get caught with internet pornography on your computer, you may get a slap on the wrist. They were throwing the book at this guy. Uh, and, okay, well, internet pornography. Why at work? Why was your internet porn addiction so high that you needed to use a work computer? My wife and I don't talk anymore. Breakdown in communication. Why, doesn't, why don't you and your wife talk anymore? Well, she doesn't get me. Lack, lack of intimacy. Well, you know, I don't have the social support. OK, well, we need to increase the social support. Well, who do you talk to? Well, I have my guild that I talk to. Your guild? Slide on the IAT. Yes. Um, so he was into WoW. And I think you, you mentioned the, uh, I met my girlfriend online. He was actually having an, an emotional relationship with one of his guild members. Now, online girlfriend. Now, <laughs> it, it may not be a girl. You're absolutely right, but it wasn't. It wasn't the, the physical connection. It was the emotional connection. It was this person gets me. This person talks to me. You know, how was your day? This person would rather spend more time talking to a person that they'll probably never meet than their own, you know, wife, and. Unfortunately, it manifested in um, his internet porn addiction, and it spilled over to uh, the occupational side. But once again, risk reduction. You know, uh, can you reduce the amount of time you play play WoW and, and talk to your um, your girlfriend, internet girlfriend, uh, in exchange for the hours that you're saving, the time you're saving? Have a conversation with your wife. Start having some communication. I don't think it's going to work, but um, I'm going to give it my best shot. And again, elevated in IAT 3, 4, 11, 19, and 20. All right, last. 25 year old Caucasian male. He came to me for domestic violence. Domestic violence. Okay, tell me what happened. Well, me and my wife, we argue about financial issues. OK, well, what kind of what bills can we try to um, you know, reduce? You know, what can we get rid of in order to get into a better financial state? Well, I have this, 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 and this, and my EverQuest bill. EverQuest. I do a slam dunk with IAT. <laughs> IAT. People sometimes will just, they'll build their character up so high, and then real life catches up with them. I started playing EverQuest, not me, but the person said I started playing EverQuest when I was 16. Evercrack, yes. Started playing EverQuest when I was 16. He's now 25, and now he has a wife, he has a kid. The priorities change. But he could not let that go, especially in, in the financial area. So he's on the couch. He's on his laptop. Wife says, hey, we need to talk about bills. Whatever, leave me alone. No, we need to talk about bills. 
Thwap grabbed his laptop and said, no, we need to talk about the bills. Now, I think he was in the middle of, I never played EverQuest, so would raid be a, a, a correct term, or how does that work? Okay. So he was in the middle of one of his uh, guild activities. He got hot. It's like, woman, don't you touch my laptop, pushes her. Now, in the military, they take domestic violence very seriously. Even for the smallest incident, um, they will remove a remove the offender, and not even the offender, they'll move the service member. So even if the wife was the assailant, they'll remove the service member and put them in the barracks for 72 hours with no contact. In addition, they, they'll, he'll have to um, do some type of domestic violence classes. But still, I'm not saying EverQuest was the culprit. I'm going to say it was a factor. And again, IAT, elevated 3, 5, 9, 13, and 20. All right, so in summary, the IAT, it's, it's a tool that I use to kind of give the patient insight into their own addiction. I give them insight into you know, their own psychopathology. Because um, just by hearing their narrative, I have already have the idea in my mind. But you know, it's, if I tell you something, whatever, and blow this guy off. If you do something independently and say, oh, OK, well, maybe he has kind of made this, then it's, it's a very powerful tool. Um, social support. If your wife, mother, daughter says, hey, I think you're playing games too much, okay, maybe you are. Maybe I'm not. Who knows? But if you start hearing it enough, you might want to give it some credence. Uh, and then. Um, always have a minute-by-minute uh, minute replacement plan. If I'm going to reduce my activity by 30 minutes, have something to fill your time. Because if you say, I'm going to reduce my time by 30 minutes, and you just sit there, <laughs> that itch, that compulsion, uh, like, OK, I'm not doing anything. I wonder what my guild is doing. You wonder, you know, I, you have to find something to fill your time. And hopefully it's with something productive. Uh, any additional questions at this time? Yes, in the back. <laughs> no, uh, I haven't actually heard about that. Um, that could be a, a good tool for them to use, but. I, I try to shy away from giving my patients resources to look up on the internet. <laughs> it's like telling an alcoholic, hey, I need you. Um, yes. Yes, pretty much. So, but yes, uh, anything that's printable, I, I try to, to give them that. Or I'll, we'll talk about strategies on how to reduce their time, what we can fill it with. Yes. There's something called the trans theoretical model of change. Um, and one of the one of the um, attributes of it is you have to be ready to make the change. If you're not ready to make the change, I can't help you. So there's a stage called pre-contemplation, which means you're not even aware of it. Contemplation means, OK, I'm aware, but am I ready to make that step? So even if I don't, if I can't get that person to stop, just move them from pre-contemplation to contemplation, that's a win in my book. Because they, it may take them two or three years to get to the next step of, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce my time. But just planting that seed, you got to give it time to grow. Yes? My name is Thomas, and I'm an addict. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Thomas. So 
So I'm, 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 the question I'm really getting at is do, do you use birth defect or, uh, or regression method, I'm sorry, for, um, <laughs> for uh, fixing, you know, these people, for mm -hmm. people? Um, but you wouldn't do that with alcoholism. You wouldn't say, like, you know, hey, why not just drink, you know, two shots tonight instead? You'd usually go cold turkey on that individual and say, I believe. Is there a reason why that works? Because I don't think that would work for me. You said just two hours. I'd be like, okay, two hours. As soon as I was out of therapy, I'd be back to zero. Right? The pair, well, First of all, on, on, the, on the addict thing, there's actually a, a group. It's similar to Al-Anon. Uh, I think it's called Online Gaming Anonymous. Anonymous. Um, they actually copied the exact principles from Al-Anon to, uh, to that. One is a physiological issue. You can become Okay, there's a difference between dependence and, and, and addiction. If you are physiologically dependent on a substance, then you can want to stop all you want. But your body will say, I'm not getting what I'm used to. Let's go into cardiac arrest. Where this is more in the mind. I mean, you'll still have the, the, the want. You'll still have the desire, um, but it's it's kind of comparing apples and oranges at, at this point. Um, is it dangerous? It can be dangerous in the right circumstances, you know, online gaming, especially in the military aspect in an employed environment. But one is the result of a problem, I guess, if that makes sense, and one is actually a problem. If I see somebody drinking. Um, a beer driving down, um, driving down the road in Nashville, that's an immediate concern. If I see somebody on a plane Farmville on their cell phone at a traffic light, that's a concern too, but odds are they'll probably make it home and not, you know, probably safer than the person guzzling a beer. Maybe. 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 Who knows? Yes. And you, you know what? I, I think I think you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I I love I love playing games. Uh, my I say, I say my drug of choice is Left 4 Dead 2. But you know the, there comes a time. Okay, my my obsession versus my my well-being. If I want to, there there are motivating factors in life. Okay, I get up every morning because. I don't, not, the, not that I don't want to go to work, it's just I want to make some money. Well, with that in mind, uh, I, I admit I'm a compulsive day trader, and I make a lot of money. So that's not then a predicament. Right. No, right. But once again, it goes into the, um, the impairment. <laughs> what, what what impairments are being displayed? Um, if if you're a programmer and you're obsessed about the code, and you know I got this get this debugging right, great. Are you ignoring you know your wife, your children? Um, what are, what are the trade offs? Success. Okay, so but you, and, and okay. Right, right. Your pros, pros and cons, everything. Now, taking a logical uh, approach to this, let's say you're you're a programmer, and you know you got to be obsessed about this code. I get this right. Okay, pro column, con column. If the pros outweigh the cons, more power to you. Rock on. But if one of the cons is you're lonely, then again, it's that insight, that self-awareness. I know this is going to be an issue. I'm willing to accept this. I'm not ready to make that change just yet. If the seed is planted, that it's a, it's a possibility. If I moved you from pre-contemplation to contemplation, I consider that a success. Yes? Why were you motivated to come here today and speak to us? 
Good question. Okay, so a little bit about my background. Um, I have a, a bachelor's in sociology, a master's in information technology, a master's in social work, and a doctorate in psychology. I used to be the CIO of uh, the military hospital at Fort Stewart, and I love IT. Um, but when I got to the CIO level, I was no longer hands-on. I was managing the people that were hands-on. So my, my, my love and my passion for for IT, it kind of dwindled because I come became my manager by spreadsheet, and I, I didn't like that. Uh, so the Army offered a social work program to where I can transition to be a mental health officer, and I said, you know what, a combination of IT and mental health, I think I can get on, get on board with that. So, uh, and uh, there are, there are a lot of issues that are associated with IT that a lot of therapists just won't touch because. Again, if you mention computers to somebody that they, they don't understand, I have the best of both worlds. I know the IT side. I know the clinical side. So I feel that I'm in a better position than my peers to well, provide help and assistance to, to those who need it. So, but I was scheduled to come here last year to be a participant, but I ended up having surgery, uh, sleep apnea surgery, so I missed it. But I'm here today. And uh, I have definitely enjoyed the talks um, from everyone. And I felt, well, I might as well contribute um, some of the knowledge I have. So answer your question. Yes, in the back. Specifically online gaming addiction, or just what types of addiction? I have not studied or seen a correlation between PTSD and online gaming addiction. The only correlation that I could even speculate on would be the need to be engaged in a military environment. And I say military environment, I mean first person shooters. Um, you, you'll see people who will play first person shooters as a way to get rid of some of the anger and aggression. And if, 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 you, if you met somebody with PTSD, um, anger and aggression, they, 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 have, they may have an underlying irritability. Just irritable, that's the best way I can put it. Um, they're not mad, but they're always, I, I would say, I'm, I'm just, irritable is the best way I can put it. So to kind of get rid of some of that irritability, some of that the angst, like you put it, you know, let's just, um, shoot some, some people, in, virtual people, in, in the head and kind of relieve some of that stress. But I haven't seen a direct correlation between PTSD and online game addiction to answer your question. Just speculate. Yes? Um, the, the way you phrase that, not exactly. Um, games, America's Army, seen it, played it, yes, no? Okay, so America's Army was created by the military uh, to be a recruiting tool um, to, to kind of show the recruits, this is what your life is going to be like. And it was very accurate, very realistic. Terrible game, but very accurate and very realistic. Um, they have something called EST, Engagement Skills Trainers. Now, the military, they do have games, but they're more of simulators, kind of a shoot, no shoot scenario. Um, this is what you do, this is, what, this is when you shoot, this is when you don't shoot. I wouldn't phrase it to say that it was to desensitize them, it was to better prepare them. It's more of a muscle memory, it's more of a cognitive um, reflex. So I wouldn't call it a desensitization, I would call it um, well, what it is, a trainer. Yes, exactly. You're not wasting real ammo.
Yes, um, but the key thing is train as you fight. And um, if to avoid an incident on CNN, let them play a few video games to get that muscle memory. Yes. It's being talked about as a diagnosis in the DSM-5 coming out in, uh, I'd say, mid-2013. Uh, the, the main definition is internet addiction. They have subcategories, which could be gaming, um, this, that, and the other. But yeah, gaming would, would be a subcategory of internet addiction um, as an official diagnosis in the 2013 DSM-5. Any other questions? All right. Well, that's my talk. And just so you know, the uh, 1 o'clock is to be determined. It's Ranger Z, and the rumor is it's on Android. So.